Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Unplug TV Australia. In today's video I would like to talk about the cell balancing and what is happening in the car and why it is important for your battery pack. So the whole battery pack in the Outlander PHEV is made of 80 single cells joined together to form the 320 volt drive battery. So how are these 80 cells connected in the, inside the car? So each of these cells has a nominal voltage of 4 volts and if we connect 80 of them in a row we've got 4 volts times 80 cells is 320 volts all in total. So what happens when the battery is empty and you, you plug in your charger? Oh, the horse. <laughs> There's Ted. Hey Ted. At the beginning of the charge the battery management system does not really take care of the battery that much. It it dumps a whole lot of energy into the battery pack just to fill it as quickly as possible. And because of the cells are not all equal, so some of the cells are reaching a higher voltage earlier than other ones. And that's exactly what you don't want in your battery pack, because you want all the cells on the exact same voltage as any other cell in the pack. Because while charging it can either overcharge one cell because the voltage is already very high, or when you discharge the battery, so when you use the car, it can also damage the cell when the voltage of one cell reaches the critical uh, minimum voltage. And if you don't regulate this, it will get worse and worse every time you charge the battery pack. So the cells with the higher voltage will even go higher and the cells with the lower voltage will go lower. And this is exactly why the car has a battery management system to take care of this situation. So what you have in most electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid vehicles is called a CMU, a cell monitoring unit. And this is only a little electronic device which does exactly two things. It measures the voltage and the temperature of each individual single cell in the car. And then each single cell monitoring unit reports these information back to the battery management unit or BMS battery management system. It gets all the information about single voltages, single cell temperatures, it controls the fan speed to cool down the battery pack and it also regulates the balancing of this whole pack. So how does the balancing now work in this case? Whoever designs battery management systems can do this in two different ways. They can either use an active or a passive balancing system for the pack. Active balancing means the, the battery management unit looks for the highest voltage in the pack and transfers the energy back to the one with the lowest voltage. So what that means is it would discharge this one cell and transfers the energy back into the one with the lowest voltage. And then it looks for the one with the second highest voltage and would transfer the energy back into the one with the second lowest voltage. So there's an active energy transfer from one cell into another. And as you can imagine, this is a very complex system. And it is a huge effort to compare all these voltages together and make sure the right energy from one cell is going to another one. Heaps of cabling, heaps of software is necessary to get this done. And as always, when you transfer energy, there's always a loss as well. And at the end, this effort, this software which is needed for it, this complexity of this system makes it really, really expensive. And I don't know any car out there at the moment which is using an active balancing system at all. Not even Tesla is using it because it is so complex and so just expensive to, um, to build and to put in. So all manufacturers of electric vehicles using passive balancing systems at the moment. So passive balancing consists out of a switch and a resistor and that's it. If the cell monitoring unit discovers a cell with a high voltage it closes a switch and basically discharges this one cell over a resistor which transforms the energy into heat and lowers the voltage in this particular cell until the target voltage is reached. I haven't got the dog connected but if you go to the leftmost screen of the dog this is what the target 
voltage is on the bottom right hand corner of your um, screen. You can see the average voltage and the target voltage. So if one of the cells is right above the target voltage, um, the CMU, the cell monitoring unit, um, reports this to the battery management unit and the battery management unit drives this little switch here which then will basically discharge this one cell until the target voltage is reached again. And this, as I said, this is of course a very wasteful process because we are just transforming this energy into heat instead of transferring the energy back into the system and to charge another battery. So the passive balancing process is very established in all electric cars at the moment because it is very cheap to build. It's only a switch, an electronic switch and a resistor. So we've got 80 of these balancer. They are called balancer drivers. And this is basically how the um, battery management unit controls the voltage and makes sure each individual cell has the same voltage at the end of the charging cycle. So this is of, of course um, quite wasteful because we are just discharging the battery until the target voltage is reached. Um, but this is obviously very, very um, cheap to build. It's just an electronic switch and a resistor for each cell. And this is all back connected to the battery management unit, which then um, yeah, closes this um, little switch and discharges this one cell. So this is basically how the passive voltage um, cell, cell balancing system works in our car. In fact, it works in each car, even in a Tesla or a Nissan Leaf or in a you name it, they all have this kind of battery cell balancing system installed. Just imagine you have 80 single um, empty buckets sitting there and you have to fill all these buckets with water and at the beginning you don't care, you just pour it over the whole, over all the buckets and they're filling at different levels. So you've got one is almost full and the other one is only half full because you didn't get enough. And this is principally the same thing with batteries as well. Some of them are filling faster than the other ones. The, the balancing driver basically makes sure at the end they are all have all the same um, amount of water in them. And this is why the charging speed slows down at the end of the charging at about 80-85%. And then when the um, battery management unit kicks in and says, okay, it's enough energy for all your cells. We have to look at each individual and make sure they're all on the same level, yeah? So it stops the charging almost. It goes back to 70, 80 watts and then looks at every individual cell and makes sure they're all on the same um, level. So if one cell is above the target voltage, it um, clicks this little switch and discharge this battery until it reaches the target voltage. If one of the cells is under the target voltage, it's doesn't do anything with them, but it makes sure at the end they're all on the same level. And this is always what we mean when we say we have a well-balanced pack. So there you have it. You now know how the balancing process in your car works. You know what active and passive balancing is. You know how the big mother unit controls all this shit together in your car and makes sure the battery is well balanced at the end of the charging cycle. There is a big discussion going on there's a big discussion going on on the tesla forum at the moment people are saying the tesla cars they balance their pack all the time so not only while the car is charged but all the time and because they don't have a tesla watchdog or something so they can't really look into the um actual um cell voltages is it's only speculation what they are saying over there I, I don't think it is the case because you need you need to have a defined state of um, battery conditions to actually measure the voltage and the temperature. And this is most likely being done while the car is charged and then it throttles down the, the energy going into the battery to about 100 watts only. This is mainly to have a very low um, charging speed so all the cells have the same condition and then you measure and then you make a decision this one is too high, this one is too low. And I cannot imagine this is happening while the car is driving so if you have 60-70 kilowatt going in or out of the battery while you drive the car for example I can't see there's anything happening with the um, cell balancing. It is a big thing on the Tesla forum at the moment 
and they are discussing it back and forth, back and forward, and some saying, yeah, the, the battery is balanced all the time, some are saying, no, it's only happening while the car is charged, some are saying, no, it's only when the car is parked for a long time, and uh, the, the battery has rested enough, and all this sort of stuff. So, I don't know, I, we know only it's happening while the car is charging, right at the, at the end, and sometimes at the beginning as well, when you use higher currents or high power to charge the car. I personally don't think there's anything else happening like when the car is parked because the battery management unit is not active at this point of time. So if, if, you, if you would balance the car while it, while it is parked you need to um, supply power to all these different um, units to make sure the battery voltage and temperature is correctly measured and stored and calculated. This alone would mean a lot of load already on the battery even while it's parked and you would potentially lose energy while parking. So I don't think this is happening in this case um, because everything is um, turned off while the car is um, turned off as well. Um, it might be different with other cars, but in this case, in the um, case of the Outlander PHV, there is nothing happening when the car is parked. All right, I think um, we have covered uh, the basics of the <laughs> battery cell smoothing procedure, because this is the real cell smoothing procedure. Yep, so the next time your um, charging slows down at right at the beginning when you plug in or at the end of the charging cycle you know exactly what's happening then that's good for the car all right guys um, thanks for watching thanks for your support again this is Andy from Unplugged EV Australia signing off stay charged and balanced see you in the next video bye